All right, so I'm back out here with the car. Um, I've got the wing on it, but I seem to have lost some of my bolts and nuts. I'm missing four of them. Started on the parachute mount, getting it done. Um, got the steel for the mid plate to make the mounts for the mid plate and then i got dowel rod because apparently you can't find um extended now our jegs don't have the extended dowels for the transmission alignment so they're half inch i'm just going to make some it's a little bit longer to get that done so just where we're at now plucking along i got up this morning was gonna go to work and the more i thought about it whenever i went outside it was pouring down rain and looked like it had rained all night i am under the trucks today had i went so it had been just a waterfall all day long and i had it scheduled off so i decided to go ahead and take it Check it out, we got the parachute mounted. Um, I don't have the handle and all that mounted yet, but the parachute is, is mounted. The bracket's built, or parachute mount. Uh, I gotta run the cable to it, get the handle mounted, and then run lines. Got it up in the air, so I'm gonna pull the transmission out. I don't have a mid plate in it, and I wanna put a mid plate in it because it's on a front front plate and a transmission mount and i'm afraid to which i don't know but i'm afraid to break the transmission if it twists up so we'll go ahead and put the mid plate in it all right everyone a little slow getting started today uh i didn't really do a whole lot so i was home with darren and I didn't want to leave him in there alone. So I waited until he was in bed and he was down. So it's rather late. Um, and I'm gonna get the transmission out, hopefully get started on making the mid plate brackets and everything. And I'm just looking around, seeing what I need to do. And I don't know if you can see up in here where it's really close right there. So I'm gonna mark that. And then while the transmission's out, I'm gonna basically just dent it in for clearance. Um, thinking about going ahead and cleaning the, the mid part of the, the underneath of the car up and painting it as well. That's the front's done, the back's done, but I haven't, I never got to the mid part. So I'll probably do that while the transmission's down out of it. Get the mid plate all in, put it all back together, and go about whatever whatever I need to do to get it done. Get the converter spaced out and all that good stuff. So, without further ado, start marking stuff. We'll make it real big too, so we got plenty of room. Um, I think that should be about it for that. Right. 
Okay. Let's see how she does. All right, so I am taking the transmission out, but my sensor wires over here that go down to it and the trans brake wire and my dumps are all hardwired in. So I am going to try to trace them down, which this, it looks like it's all grounds, um, I think, I hope, except for this one. That's a sensor. Um, we'll try and track them down, just take it apart so that Cody, Cody can do what he wants with them. I do know going forward that I'm gonna have to have a way to unhook that stuff to get the transmission out. Um, just because it is a race car and those kind of things break. I don't want to have to unwire the car to get it out. Uh, so, without further ado, I'm going to start cutting into this. That's right, stock starter. Been on it for a couple years now. last bolt out here the converter will be out or at least I'm boarded. slide it back and start on the bell housing bolts and hopefully the transmission line I'm loosen those and hopefully the transmission slides back far enough where I don't actually have to take it out. If I have to take it out, I got some wires to unhook until Cody gets here to get the, uh, the wires, the connectors in the wires. This shouldn't be a real big issue.
little persuasions needed to fit this thing in there to be able to get on it. Now, if I can just find the right spot. bend the floorboard a little bit there to get it so I can actually get this on there without it being a big awesome. done to the other car and I don't remember what all I did to do it so it makes it a little rough coming into this for the first time because all that stuff's not done yet. It will be done eventually. Got uh, my dowel rods. Went to Jags to get some extended pins, the alignment pins for the transmission, and we did not know how long that the stock ones were to go three eighths or so more. So it ended up Uncle Terry suggested I get a half inch dowel stock and make some, and that's what I did but the inch and a half ones that they had there <laughs> was which ones I needed. The, uh, the ones that are in this are only an inch long, so another half inch would have been more than sufficient, and I have plenty of room in the transmission holes for the extra quarter inch, so I made these ones an inch and a half. Well, that's where I cut it, so that's what crooked and all that what that looked like when I started and I just use a drill and go into it as sturdy as I can and spin it while that's spinning it, it kind of flattens it out and then put the bevel on it so we are all good I think I'm going to go over here and see if it fits in the 
motor plate and the block i i checked the other one with the transmission and it fit in good so i'm thinking everything should go smooth not really smooth not one piece of this has went smooth i used the, the wrong word there as we can see i have the transmission out of it i did get the motor plate in from down here but i cut cut that out that out and i finally got it to go up in there and it vibrated and fell out through here so i could i could have just went up in through there and got it let me back that up there we go yeah it fell out down through this way and i was trying to get it in this way but we are are getting it i guess it's up in there uh, i got my dowels so i'm gonna try and fit those in which it's kind of tight in the motor plate um and keep on pushing on there's the transmission over here i was saying nothing went smooth i had tried to since all this was hardwired in some of it had eyelets on it up top i couldn't get it through the hole so i had to try to strategically cut this stuff so we can put ends on them now yeah, i don't even know if you could see it kind of bouncing around which this one was the sensor this sensor so i, I was able to pull it out i tried to cut it so that we can put ends on it and make it all detachable and leave you know the wiring in the car and just pull out what i needed to get the transmission out pretty easy so that's where we're at. I see that you're working on a nitrous pump, but everybody wants to know, and I want to know because I haven't been out here a lot, where are we on the car? Uh, well, let's go look. <clears throat> Cody was out Monday. He did a few things. Right. He has decided not to come back. He has. For reasons why we're not disclosing. Well, I'm not 100% sure of them, but yes, I'll, I'll, go ahead. And you've decided to complete the wiring yourself. I haven't decided to, I've been left that option. Okay. So. So, what else do we have left to do? I'm Show not 100% sure, I can tell you what I did do. Um, and that is, uh, somewhat got the wire and it this isn't how i want it but it is how it is right now i've still got a lot of cleaning up to do and and tracing to figure out what's going on but this should this wire is my yellow number three which is programmed to the coils um and to see rpm so it, it won't go hot until it sees rpm so now that i've got the crank trigger wheel here um the one that i'm going to use i can put it on and hopefully get the car to fire without burning up any more coils so what did fuel tech end up telling you why you were burning coils it was because the 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 coil power was going to 12 volt so anytime the ignition was on it, it just had a constant 12 volt power going to it and he said that the the coils are extremely sensitive and a lot of people out here which uh, I think Jesse Lee got on there and even said that and some other people maybe. But the coils are very sensitive and it will take, it can take, he's seen them burn up in 10 seconds to 10 minutes. Um, those are basically what the words that he said was, I've seen them burn up in 10 seconds or 10 minutes, but somewhere in between there, typically it'll burn a coil up because they are extremely sensitive. Um, so that's taken care of. I am going to leave them unplugged until until I check them just to make sure that it, it doesn't have power on it. Um, what we got going on in front? Coils are unplugged. I still have to make plug wires, which isn't no big deal. It's, that's expected. Um, this has all got to be loomed 
and I have to extend some wires. There's still wires that are too tight. So this was wrapped up before last video. No, this was not. This okay. was open. The other side's wrapped. Okay. All right. But it needs it needs to come up to the pinch weld in my eyes to try and hide it to ease ease the sore the soreness to the eyes. I guess. I think once it's loomed and it's it's the, the wires are extended and it's pulled up, I think we'll be good. What about these things run in here? Because I'm not used to those being in there. Yeah, that's part of some of the stuff that I need to extend. This is the fuel pressure sensors, which I don't have enough inputs for. So whenever I get the input expander, I can hook these up. And there's a few other things that I want to hook up, but I will route them. I will route them so that they're all routed and everything. Um... My plans are for this, all the wiring to go through the center of the intake. My this my solenoids used to go down, straight down through and out the back. Um, because there's a lot of work that goes on on foggers right in here. There's, there's already a lot going on. The last thing we need is wires. Um, so I, I need to extend those, get them down in the back and reconnect them over here. Uh, I did get a pro harness. So a lot of this stuff I'm not going to be able to get rid of. Like that stuff we're just not going to be able It's going to be on there unless I unpin it from over there and try to pull everything through and get rid of it. But it's hooked up. That's hooked up. Get all that cleaned up. Make it look nice. We've got the light wiring. I don't, I don't remember if I went over that or not. Um, Cody got this run out to here. And started on some of this before before it was late. He, he had to leave. Um, so I got I to gotta finish the headlight wiring. Um, micro switch. I've got to get wires out to it and figure out what where those wires come from, where they're supposed to come from, or if I can use the TPS wires and just, it will just see on 100% and, and zero. I don't know if I can do that yet or not, but if I can, I'll probably make a nice adapter to go from it to the, the micro switch. Um, I've still got to weld in O2 bungs but the O2s are laying out here. Oil pressure's in. That is coolant pressure. We got coolant temperature back here. That is all in. Um, fuel pressure, or my main fuel pressure, my two fuel pressures are for the nitrous. Um, <clears throat> we got two kits, two fuel pressure uh, sensors here, and then we've got a main sensor here. I feel like for the time being that I can get by without these two because the the input expander deal is I mean, it costs a little bit of money there to get so if if I have any issues I should see any kind of fuel pressure drops here unless it's one of the regulators I haven't had any issues out of the regulators in, in a few years they seem to stand pretty good so Hopefully, and we're gonna take it slow. I'm not just gonna go out and blast this thing without doing a lot of testing, and a lot of it's gonna be just testing to see what kind of changes it makes if I do something in the computer. Uh, I feel like it's gonna be a lot safer, and I'm not gonna tear it up on motor. Once I add the nitrous, I've proven boxes of pistons that I, I it's pretty easy for me to tear Wait stuff from that. Uh, so, in the beginning, you you didn't want to do the wiring yourself, but now you're doing the wiring yourself. Right. What, do you know anything about wiring? I mean, I mean, I knew you did a little bit on the last car. Are you confident in your ability to get this done? And that, that's why I didn't want to do it, because I wasn't confident. Um, a, when I dropped it off, I'm not even going to say that. I'm not going to say when I dropped it off. 
when I put the wiring back in it, it was 100% ready to go race, like, or go have the, be aligned and, and start testing. It wasn't ready to race, different car, different gear ratio, different, there's a lot of differences, but the engine tune-up was in it already. Uh, the nitrous tune-ups was in, them all, in it already. I knew everything worked 100%. I was, I was comfortable and knowing how it worked. I, I knew how to maneuver around in it somewhat. I still didn't know how to utilize the box that I had, but I did know enough to, to keep it alive. Now I know nothing. I don't know if anything's gonna work. I was not confident in cutting that out and it kinda almost broke up when I saw it all cut out laying in a big ball of mess. So, but I was, I was, I had confidence that it was all going to come together and everything was going to be good. Now I'm finishing it myself. And we're four weeks behind <laughs> from the car yeah. running. Yeah. Um, four, so, four weeks off from the car running. And I um, know a lot of your viewers are like, take your time, take your time, don't rush it. What is the reason why you're so big on timelines and why are you rushing? Explain that to your viewers because everybody's telling you not to rush to take it slow. So every minute that the car is in here being worked on and not able to be raced. Is experience with the car, seat time. Um, there is races going on every weekend again and I'm seeing all my competitors, not all of them, but 90% 90, 90 of my competitors out there racing, they're, they're relearning their stuff. So I'm getting behind more and more and more every minute, every hour, every day, I mean, every week, every month. Um, and that's big. Seat time in a brand new, completely brand new build is, is huge. So with that, um, I'm starting to panic a little bit over here <laughs> because let's face it, uh, this isn't a cry for help or anything, but I can't afford to just go out and waste tires and waste fuel and waste nitrous. Um, going to races knowing that I, I've got zero chance of winning, so I have to feel confident. So once it's ready and I have no light at the end of the tunnel, I have no idea when it's gonna be ready because I don't know how long it's gonna take me to finish it. That's what I was going to say. This looks like a lot. I'm not a wiring expert by no means, but this looks like a lot to finish. I hope it looks like a lot and it's not so bad. Um, I do have a few questions, so I am going to call Fuel Tech probably a lot. I, if I have a question, I'm going to call them. But with that, I've only got what they close at what, five? Mm hmm. I get home at like 3.30, so I don't have a whole lot of time to figure out what questions I have until I'm working on it, and, and, and then I have to wait till the next day. So, there's, if that happens, I'm going to have a lot of time just waiting to be able to get an answer. Um, I do know he said that there was a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Fuel Tech has a Facebook page. So I need to figure out what that is, where it is, and how to get ohms on there and, and hope for somewhat quick responses. It just depends on who's on there. And I pray that there's not a bunch of idiots on there like there is typical Facebook that just pipe up and don't really know what the hell they're talking about. So that's kind of where we're at. Can I, so I just want to butt in, I'm me. I'm say this again, that I, I'm not going to elaborate. I'm not going to go into it. I'm not going to throw any negative itty out there. We try, we're trying to keep the negativity down with everything. Except for the comments about me. Except for the comments about her, like, um, yeah. Talking about the situation and not commenting on it and everything. And people will talk. It's a racing community. They always do. I'm past it. I'm, I'm over it. Uh, I don't think he's a horrible guy. He just made a crappy decision. He's uh, had good intentions. Um, yeah. Yep. But I'm proud of you how you handled the situation. I'm glad that we're moving forward. You can't seem to do that. <laughs> You're not getting past it. Let's, let's be real. 
All okay, right. I am a little salty. <laughs> but she... I stayed out of the barn the whole time it was being worked on, so I didn't say anything. And I'll leave it at that. Because I could we, go on for days. We we had talked it over and even inquired to others, but she can't she can't just let it be. She had to bring it up. So so with that, we are done with it. And she's not going to say anything more about it. So. On camera. It is what it is. <laughs> I mean, bottom line is, is I've got to finish it to get the car out. So. That is the bottom that's line. That's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not 100% confident, but I do feel confident with, honestly, Fuel Tech. Cody at Fuel Tech has been great to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, and I feel like any any issues I have that he will be able to walk me through it. So I agree on that one. At least to get it running and try to get me somewhat acquainted. Um, I would love to at some point go out and take one of their courses, whether it's the the three day, the five day. Um, I just don't I haven't figured out how it's going to work. So, with that, I'm going to take another two days off vacation when the car was delivered, so that's two days less that I have to race. And I want to race. So, if this thing don't get done soon, I'm going to blow Jess's car up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confident I will blow it up well, trying to race it, and that's not, that's not what it's for. So I will have to tell you <laughs> that one of our good friends messaged me the other morning, and it kind of hit home a little bit. She said, when things like this happen to you guys, this is when you guys come together as a family and really show what we can do. So I hope this situation is that case. Ah, me too. I knew I couldn't wire it meet any kind of timeline. Um, and that's, that still stands I, because I can't say, you know, this is what needs done. It will take me this long to do it because I, I honestly don't know how long it will take me to, to do it. Hopefully it's not that long. I mean, I do have, I don't know what old Caleb Bigham was over there is doing, but he's a pretty intelligent guy. He's very intelligent, but what are you going to bribe him with? It can't be pizza and beer. I mean, I was thinking pizza and beer, but I'm... Feet picks, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah.